Our lecture for today is about immune responses, part two. Learning objectives for this lecture, uh, differences between innate and adaptive immune responses, antibody-mediated primary and secondary immune responses, secondary immune responses of T lymphocytes, adaptive immunity, major effector branches of adaptive immune response, the two pathways linking innate and adaptive immune responses. Now differences between innate and adaptive immune responses. Innate immune response, immediate protection, fast within seconds, lack of specificity, lack of memory, no change in intensity. At that while adaptive acquired immune response, long-lasting protection, slow, four to five days after the innate immune response, specific immunological memory, change in intensity. Antibody mediated primary and secondary immune response. Primary immune response results from inc after encounter with the antigen for the first time, while the secondary immune response results after the second encounter with the same antigen. Antibody in primary immune response, it is detectable in the serum within days or weeks depending on nature and dose of antigen and the route of administration. While in secondary immune response, anti antibody response is more rapid and rise to higher levels than during the primary response due to, to the memory cell. In primary immune response, antibody, antibody levels continue to rise for several weeks and then decline. In the secondary immune response, IG, IgM amount produced is qualitatively similar to that of the primary response. In primary immune response, the first antibody formed are IgM followed by IgG and IgA or both. IgM levels decline sooner than IgG levels. While in secondary immune response, IgG levels is higher and persist much longer than the primary immune response. Antibody binds to antigen more firmly, higher affinity in the secondary immune response. Antibody mediated primary and secondary immune responses. Immune responses to antigens may be mentioned as primary or secondary response. The primary here on the diagram shows the primary immune response of the body to antigen occurs on the first occasion when the antigen encountered by the body. Depending on the nature of antigen and the site of entry, this response can take up to 14 days to resolve and leads to the generation of memory cells with a high specificity for the in inducing antigen. The humor response mediated by B cell with the help of T cells produces high affinity and antigen specific antibody in that case. This is in contrast with the CD8 T cell response, which lead to the generation of large numbers of antigen specific cells that are capable of directing the culling infected cell. Antigen-specific CD4 
4 T cells, which provide help to B cell in the form of cytokines and other stimulatory factor, can also be expanded upon antigenic stimulation. In the first primary response, we see on this figure that first IgM will be produced. There will be a lag phase and then exponential phase and decline phase. The IgG appear after that, produced after that, and but with less intensity comparing with secondary response. In secondary response, both B cell and T cell is observed following subsequent encounter with the same antigen and is more rapidly leading to the activation of previously generating generated memory cells in that case. This will lead to a, di to a difference in quantity of immunoglobulins produced in primary response and secondary response in that case. The key role is immunological memory in that which lead to that difference. In second, second encounter with the same antigen, when the body exposed to the same antigen, IgG, IgM appear, but in the same intensity, intensity like in primary immune response. But the difference here with IgG, IgG will increase in its level in blood more than the in its level during the primary response because now these cells have memory cells and act directly again to activate and produce immunoglobulins antibodies against this antigen. IgG levels in the blood stay high level and then began to decline after a long period. While IgM, as we mentioned, the same intensity and the same level as in the primary immune response. Secondary immune responses of T lymphocytes. T lymphocytes similar exhibit enhanced secondary responses as we mentioned in the previous slide, producing cells with improved helper or cytotoxic effector function. Here in this diagram, as we see, helper T cell will upon encounter with in the in secondary uh, encounter with the same entity it will expand proliferate and activate and then it's effect by in producing cytokines chemokines to help other cells to activate being activated like B cell. Helper T cell will help B cell to proactivate and proliferate and differentiate into plasma cells and memory cells to produce antibody and screen large number of antibodies against this antigen. Also, helper T cell help macrophage to increase the killing capacity of macrophage and to be activated causing inflammation in that case. 
also it have role in it has role in activating cytotoxic T cell and make it make cytotoxic T cell more able to kill the a microorganism in that case. Adaptive, adaptive immunity can be acquired naturally or artificial, either by active or passive protein antibodies or, or act, uh, transforming activating T cells. Active will be divided into natural by exposure to infectious agent give the body acquired immunity against the infectious agent in that case or artificial through immunization by giving vaccine give adaptive immunity to the body in passive ready-made antibody or introducing activity T lymphocyte give the body adaptive immunity in that case. In ready-made antibody, in maternal antibodies like IgG acquired from the mother to her fetus by crossing the IgG through placenta with the blood to the fetus from the mother. Artificial antibody from other sources can be obtained from other sources in other species or in different mechanisms in that case to produce antibodies artificially to give adaptive immunity to the host. We mentioned that maternal antibodies are only IgG. What's the reasons for that? Why only IgG can cross the placenta, not IgM, for example? I want you to think about that. Why IgM can cannot cross the placenta to the fetus? Only IgG. Okay, and then discuss between us and the telegram, or you can discuss between you, you and your colleagues and that other students through the telegram. I raise many questions about these terms or items we mentioned through the lecture. Advantage of active immunity, long-term resistance, capacity to respond faster and to greater extent after the exposure to the same antigen. Disadvantage, slow onset of resistance, need for prolonged or repeated contact with antigen. Advantage of passive immunity. A availability of large amount of antibody while disadvantage short lifespan of this antibody it will be a decline faster possibility of hypersensitivity reaction if this these antibodies obtained from from another species artificial passive immunity Major effector branches of adaptive immune response, humoral immunity by B lymphocyte, mature in B lymphocytes, mature in the bone marrow, and cell mediated immunity, T lymphocyte by T lymphocyte, which mature in the thymus. Humoral immunity through production of antibody molecules, wire cell mediated immunity through cytotoxic T lymphocytes, cytokines, 
activated macrophage, activated NK cells. Many effector cells like T cells and B cells. T cells have receptors and have effector function, function to help for antibody protection by activating B cells, also in killing virus infected cells through cytotoxic T cell, and also have a regulatory role. B cell have receptors for antigen just like IgG. IgD and IgM first encounter with pathogenic and or any foreign antigen simulated through the activation uh, by immune cells just like helper T cell to antibody protection. Here, this figure shows how antigen drives the immune response. The immune response is stimulated by antigen first. A basal level of immune response is maintained by tissue resident cell of the immune innate response and by naive and any pre-existing memory lymphocyte of the acquired response. Upon encounter with antigen, an immune response is generated involving the proliferation and differentiation of antigen-specific lymphocyte in secondary lymphoid tissue and the recruitment of both innate and acquired cells to the site of the infection. Upon successful elimination of the pathogen, the stimulus disappears in that case and the immune response returns to its near resting state as the first and first time, but now with enhanced memory. That means the immune system acquired memory for this antigen. If it's encountered this antigen in future it will stimulate faster in that case as respect to acquire response the two pathways linking innate and adaptive acquired immune responses the adaptive immune system is highly dependent on cells of the innate immune system of course for the purpose of knowing when to respond, how to respond, and for how long. Here in the, this figure, innate and acquired immune responses. How these two pathways link together? In innate, we have polymorph nuclear cell, complement, dendritic cell, macrophage, cytokines, and NK cells, all these together will link to this T cell, which have a role in activating B cell. B cell have a role in antibody production. Antibody in turn have a role in complement activation in that case. A humoral immunity against extracellular infection through production of antibodies against this extracellular infection while in intracellular infections cell-mediated immunity needed to eliminate intracellular infection in that case to uh, introduce the peptide as we mentioned in previously with complex complex with mxc class 1 to other immune cells cd 80 cell and 
in order to make different mechanisms to eliminate the, these infected cells. Thank you very much.